Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And what he do? And he's gonna react to all the self snitching. Oh. Hi, this is Bruce Rivers. Welcome to another episode of Criminal Lawyer Reacts. Today we are doing a King Vaughn special. A lot of people have requested this one. How it go? So, um, before we start in on this, I just want to say thank you to everybody who's uh, uh, subscribed. Also, want to get on Instagram. Let's boost our Instagram numbers. The reason being is that if you're on Instagram, you'll get a little heads up from live feeds of when we're going to do what. So that will be a little more um, happening. And uh, also, want to thank our Patreon members. Um, you are responsible for getting people out of jail. That is our uh, sole mission with the Patreon account. None of that money goes in my pocket. It goes to low-income people who are trying to get out on $100, $200 bail, and they're just sitting there because. So without further ado, here is King Vaughn, How It Go. Try turning it up a little bit. Now, it appears that this King Vaughn video is all about fighting a case. So this is really up my alley. <clears throat> when you fight in the, them cases, court dates come slow. Them nine ones, uh, no joke. You just got to have hope. When you have a case, uh, first of all, they can take anywhere from six months to a year or even longer. And when you go to court, you have to wait and wait and wait. Um, that's why I like to get to court early get in there early, get my client in early, and be the first one, and we're out. Uh, so you're, otherwise, you're sitting there waiting all day, and that's kind of what he's talking about here. So it looks like he's in jail here watching a video with his lawyer. That is really common, and I do that all the time. Now, with COVID... We're doing this over Zoom, and you can share your screen with your client and that kind of thing, but um, you really need to have a close interaction with your client. He says, you give him names, you ain't playing uh, by the rules. Leave his ass in a pool of his own damn blood. In other words... Um, you're snitching, and uh, you ain't playing by the rules. In other words, you're not supposed to snitch. And if you snitch, you're going to be dead. Well, you know you got a child, uh -huh. and his mama ain't shit, but I know you learned that bad now. Her, she fucking with the ops. Damn. And she was just when they blocked with the same nigga you was trying to pop. Man, this shit got to stop. Damn. Now you locked in a room, you just fucking wait, do a push-up. You better check on your bro, because a nigga on the new came in, said he heard he got smoked. You better check on your hope. One of the things that happens when you're fighting a case is that people try to fuck with your head. Um, he's saying, and she was just on the block with the same fella you was trying to pop. Um, and, you know, I can't tell you how many times in jail <clears throat> my clients will take the word of a jailhouse lawyer or, a, or somebody that's in their cell uh, over what I have to say. Um, and then once I show them what the real deal is, then they um, they come around. But it's it messes with your head when you're incarcerated. That that prison and jail violence is real. Um, not as real as it, they make it in the movies. I mean, it's, it's kind of rare, but it is real. And especially if you are a vulnerable class. The vulnerable classes would be somebody who's uh, child pornography or a chomo, they call them. You know, that's somebody who is a child molester. Um, or if you're a snitch, you those are probably the most 
vulnerable classes of folks that are in in custody. And when you're in jail, there's nothing to do. So what do people do when they don't have anything to do? They, they, they try to get in shape. And so you see him uh, doing push-ups. Um, and, the, and people are really creative in jail. The other thing they try to do is they, they'll make hooch, which is uh, they'll take fruit and, uh, and put it behind the toilet and try to hide it. And so they make their own booze. He says he's been gone for a couple of years. I don't know if that means he's a couple of years into his sentence or if he's only got a couple of years to do. But, you know, it's it's a lonely thing to be in prison. And it's a lonely thing to be, especially a young guy in prison. Um, older people can kind of make do and um, have more perspective. But, um, you know, when if you have somebody that's in jail, you should support them. Now that's the worst. You get out of jail and you want to see your kids and your baby's mama won't give you the time of day. Um, it's, it's a helpless feeling. Um, I remember one client that I had, we went down to Dallas right after he got out of federal prison to try to find his child. And uh, we really, really had to go the extra mile in order just for him to see his kid. And now, um, five years later or so, he's... Um, the best dad I've ever seen. So it's really important uh, to keep that relationship alive. And when you have a baby's mom that steps in the way of it, that's a problem. That's the other thing. You get out of prison, you don't have shit going on. And so if you're a young guy, and you were on the streets and you're dealing drugs, so easy to fall back into that because that's all you know. But if you stick to it and uh, and you get work wherever you can get it and start building, and that's one of the things I've always told my son and other people, that you every day you should be building, building relationships, building on your education, building your future. And it's very tough when somebody gets out of prison to do that building, but it's just got to be day by day, penny by penny. See, he's talking about what you're going to do, would you, uh, go this way or go that way. And, you know, getting that quick, easy money is so tempting. It is, and it's, you know, and, and the young guys look up to it. But, um, but it's dirty money. I mean, I think that's what he's talking about here is dirty money. Um, you know, and you, you get back into that shit and all of a sudden you make those decisions and they have lifelong impacts. So the couple of years you did before ain't nothing to compare to what's coming down the pike. Better have your pole in here, uh, in other words, your firearm. Um, and do you really want to have that? I mean, 
in the area that we're talking about, the 600 block, um, maybe it's a necessity, but you know, it's a five year hard mandatory minimum if you've got a felony. So when you make these decisions and you, um, are a target of cops, um, holding that pole is going to be, um, a fast ticket back to where you don't want to be. So then he, sh then he shoots his, the, the guy that she's with. I just. The last line there, answer your phone. Um, it, it's such a lonely thing. It's such a, uh, you're in prison um, and you're alone. And it's because of decisions that you made. So, um. It's kind of a sad video, really, when you think about it. But it's it's a good piece of art because it shows the consequences of making certain decisions. So uh, this has been King Vaughn, How It Go. Um, shout out to my producer, uh, Michael Rivers, um, king of all that is media. He is just an amazing cat, uh, second-year law student in Mitchell uh, Hamlin School of Law. I want to shout out to... JLAP for our intro, the fire of the intro. And I want to shout out to every one of our subscribers. And if you're a subscriber, flip over to Instagram right now and uh, follow us on Instagram. You'll get some uh, other things uh, like updates uh, quicker than you would otherwise. And here's the thing. We're going to come up with some merch. Um, send some comments if you'd like to see some merch. Because uh, we've got some pretty cool stuff that I think you guys are going to like. we just got to figure out how to streamline the process to get it all out to you. Again, this has been Bruce Rivers, Criminal Lawyer Reacts, How It Go by King Vaughn.